Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Well, can you state your yeah, name yeah, for the people at home? I'm not allowed to look at the camera. Yeah, Steve Friedell, HVAC manager. All right. And uh, of course, guys, I'm Robert Matterick. I'm the general manager here, HVAC tech by trade, and work my way up the ladder. So, Steve, you have some questions for me. So I do. Um, first question, obviously. I mean, what are the most common types of ACs found up, up in the attic? So, when we're talking about attic equipment, um, that's part of your air conditioner. So we commonly hear people, oh. like when we go to checkups, people are like, what are you guys doing in my attic? What is up there? Because they think their air conditioner, if they have one of the air conditioners on the ground, mm -hmm. is that's their air conditioner. But that is actually one third of the air conditioning system itself. That's called the condenser outside. Oh, okay. If you look at the condenser, you'll see copper lines. They uh -huh. lead into the wall. And what happens is those go up the wall into your attic and those connect to... Um, the technical term is your evaporator coil. We call it the cooling coil because that's what gives you all your cold air. Absolutely. And then typically that connects to your furnace. Now, a lot of people think furnace and they think just heat, but your furnace has the control board that's kind of like the brains of the operation. It's what talks to the thermostat and that's what turns on all the equipment, the part outside, the, all the parts in the attic, the blower motor. And then the furnace also has the blower motor that pushes all the air into the house, you know, gotcha. so it works for the AC and heat. So if you ever have your AC inspected and someone doesn't go into the attic, they're only checking one third of your equipment and they're not checking the cooling coil or the furnace and that blower motor, the controls, the whole nine yards. Makes sense. Now, is there different types? There is. So if you have a furnace, when we say furnace, that means it uses natural gas to produce a flame. Okay. That flame heats up a what's called a heat exchanger and air blows across that hot heat exchanger. That's what gives you hot air. There's also a type called a heat pump. And you'll hear people use this term wrong all the time. They're like, oh, I have a heat pump. I have a heat pump. And it's just a term that they've learned if you, like, you live like back east or they're really popular in mild climates. Mm -hmm. um, a heat pump is all electric. So instead of it being hot coil outside, cold coil in the attic, the heat pump actually has what's called a reversing valve to flip those functions. So it's now hot coil in the attic, cold coil outside. There's a, you know, a process with you know, thermal exchange where it's taking heat from outside and pumping it inside or vice versa. It's taking gotcha. heat from inside your house and pumping it outside where we don't care where it goes. Gotcha. So heat pump, furnace, two most popular. There are a few different types, but they're just very rare here in Las Vegas. Gotcha. So yeah. do those heat pumps run all year round? So heat pumps, yeah. What happens is it'll run in cooling mode. Uh -huh. um, and then what will happen is when the thermostat says, oh, we need heat, that reversing valve switches which way the refrigerant's flowing. And now is instead of giving us cold air inside the house, it's giving us hot air inside the house. So they do run the same components. The drawback of a heat pump is electricity is fairly expensive out here. Now, obviously, yeah. we've seen gas go up quite a bit. Like, Drastically. Yeah, we keep, <laughs> we keep getting calls of people saying that their gas bill has like – pretty much doubled, mm -hmm. right? Like mine has, like last year, my highest bill was like 80 bucks and I just got a bill for $200 for gas. Yeah. So it used to be, there was a huge advantage to having gas because it was considerably cheaper. Now, the drawback of a heat pump is it does run year round. So instead of having like your furnace and the heating portion running six months and then the, that going dormant in the summer and then the air conditioning section running and the only components you're working year round is pretty much the control board, that blower motor and your thermostat, Correct. the heat pump, everything is running year round. So it's like, you're going to get more wear and tear, but the advantage is there's less components because you don't have like a full heating section and a full air conditioning oh, section. So it's like, yes, there's more wear and tear. Yes, there's more upkeep, but there's less components overall. Okay. So you, yeah, you were saying there's two different types, heat pump. Yeah. There's different furnace, types. There's a handful, gas. like we'll run into a type called hydronic. And I've heard of that. Yeah. So hydronic I'm uses hot water, right? Hot water. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uses hot water. But typically you see that in condo living. So yep. usually you see them in the walls. Like they're the ones right there that you can see the, the filters right there. Or you'll see them in like high rise condo. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, we, there's a few in Lake Las Vegas that we service regularly. Yeah. Just it's a small portion. Of so what with those, I mean, how often do you kind of get those checked out? Is it still like normal? Just like, yeah. you know, spring... Yeah. So the, um, the thing that all these have in common is they still have the control board. Mm -hmm. They still have the blower motor and you still also want to make sure that they're all working safely. Um, the thing with a hydronic or a furnace is that there's a gas element to it because with the hydronic, you're using a hot water heater. Yep, that makes sense. With the furnace, you're using gas. Absolutely. And with gas uh, burning, you know, one of the byproducts of burning natural gas is carbon monoxide, right? Absolutely. So everyone knows carbon monoxide, tasteless, <laughs> odorless, will kill you if you're not careful with it. That's not to scare anyone at home, but it's just to tell you that, like, you can't taste it, you can't smell it. All you think is you're getting sleepy, you go yeah. to sleep, and you and don't wake, wake up. up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Um, so you want to make sure that everything is working safe. Now, hydronic is unique because that's kind of like where two worlds collide. It's like 50% HVAC, 50% plumber. So that's why it's So do you have a plumber come out and check, look at that, or is it the HVAC guys? So typically the HVAC guys can handle all that. Okay. Um, There are times where sometimes water supply can be an issue where one of our HVAC guys will go out and take a look at it, as you know. And then um, if we can't figure it out, we pass it off to a plumber. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the HVAC guys are cross-trained though, right? Oh, yeah. 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 So I mean, obviously, you know, we do training every single day. You hold them yourself. I I, I do that. Yes. (laughs) Asking the questions for the fans out there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so Rob, I do get this question quite a bit. Okay. People call in and they're saying, Hey, you know, I I hate my unit being on the roof or I hate it being in the garage. My neighbor has it in the, in the attic. You know, what's, what's the benefits? What's the difference of equipment? So when the builder goes in, they kind of determine that. Mm -hmm. And with me, there's kind of pros and cons that kind of like fit each one. Obviously, we'll get what's called an upflow. Those are the ones that are like you'll see in a garage or in a closet. Correct. There's, you know, space problems with that. You mm-hmm. have it in your garage. It takes up a corner of your garage, right? Yeah. Um, it's Got normally on a, stuff everywhere. And yeah, and, and, and normally people surround it, and they don't realize mm-hmm. that it's supposed to, you know, be free breathing. So if someone puts a box in front of it, and it can choke off the air to the furnace. Um, but the advantage is, is like ease of service. It's right there. Sometimes they'll put the filter rack right underneath it. Mm -hmm. And so we can go in or you as a homeowner can go in, just open that little filter rack and change your filter instead of having to get on a ladder. Which makes that easy. Yeah. Which you'll actually see that in like Sun City Summerlin is really Mm -hmm. popular that they're all like upflow style in their garage. And I believe, obviously I haven't talked to them, but the builders (laughs) did it to help with the filter changes. Gotcha. Now the, because that's a 55 plus community, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Out there on like you know town center Mm -hmm. and someone parkway out there kind of that direction yeah great golfing out there great yeah 100 (laughs) percent um but the advantage of one in your attic or up on the roof is space so when you have it up on the roof obviously it's all in one package that's why it's called a package unit your air conditioner your furnace your coils everything it's up on the roof the only problems with that is that there are weight limitations that we can put on your roof so they can only get so big Mm -hmm. we can only get so much technology up there because those things do weigh a couple hundred pounds and we Absolutely. don't want to exceed that. Yeah. They've kind of gotten away from that style and new modern builds. You'll see them primarily in the attic. Gotcha. Um, makes it easy because you have this, the condenser, like I'd mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. the part outside is on the ground. They typically put that in a place that's, you know, down a chase that no one's going and then everything else is up in the attic. So it's out of sight, out of mind. But then also the advantage of that is we want the duct work to travel as you know, or there to be as seamless little as possible. Yeah, right, seamless yeah. as possible because yeah. the the quicker we can get it in and get it out, the the more air you get into your house, yep, right? One hundred percent. And so when it's like literally like you hop into the attic, the return where your filter leads into the air conditioner is you know five ten feet. We want it to be a little bit long because it helps with noise, but as short as possible. And then as short out, you would just make sure that there's no resistance in there. It just keeps your house nice and yeah. comfortable. So they put that up there. Um, and then of course, I mean. You don't have to see this big, ugly furnace. That's the sitting, big right? thing, right? Yeah, it's like you don't have to worry about that. And because you'll go into some houses, like um, it's really popular in certain pockets of houses where you'll go in and you'll actually open a closet and you'll see that furnace there. Yeah. We've relocated those to attics. That's where mine is. It's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, it's hey, like, there it is. Yeah, you're like, I wish I could put stuff in there, but you can't because it's there. I so think we, there's a can of paint in there. Right yeah. Now. We have relocated them there's just a lot of work because yeah. obviously you have power going there you have the refrigerant lines you have the duct work all this needs to be rethought and then also in the attic we have to relocate all of that there and then you also have to you know think about is there enough space to even accommodate that furnace yeah absolutely now also with a furnace versus a package unit there are efficiency implications mm-hmm. so we, we want the airflow to be as seamless as possible. And with a package unit, you know, if you've ever seen them, they're squares, they're typically like, you know, just a big cube. The air has to go go straight in and then come straight back out. Yeah. And that's really rough on it, right? Versus with a furnace, you get instead of 180 degrees, typically you get like a 90, nice smooth transition, another 90 into the house. And it just helps with airflow. And we can get a lot more efficiency out of those split units than we can out of the package so, units. So when you talk about airflow, because I know with our maintenance plan, we do free duct inspections and things like that. Yeah. What are some of the things that we would look for when we're out there doing that mm-hmm. um, for the airflow to be correct for the customer? Yeah, so we're kind of like in a unique situation. So obviously Vegas 
really the valley really exploded probably Real really quick like probably about 30 you know 20 30 years ago it really like overnight it yes. just seemed like the valley was double the size so we took a lot of you know building inspiration from the surrounding areas and mm -hmm. it seems like we copied a lot of trends from like california and utah and they don't really get the heat like we do yeah and if you know yeah. we're not california or utah <laughs> right so a lot of the duct work that we used out here just isn't holding up to the test mm -hmm. of time. So the duct work, you can have a lot of different issues from the duct work seals not being properly sealed the way that mm -hmm. now NV Energy recommends it. They recommend what's called a triple seal. Correct. And back then they were only using duct tape to hold it together. <laughs> and if you've ever had duct tape outside, yeah. it just- When it's 150 degrees in the attic, that doesn't stand. Yeah, it just starts to yeah. crumble. And 100%. It, it, one of my favorite things, I, it's unfortunate for homeowners that have this happen, but when your duct work was falling apart and I'm there on an AC inspection, it's 110. Yeah. I'm get getting that, that air cold air just out. blowing me right <laughs> in the face. I'm like, oh, this is nice up here. Um, but the duct work, you know, can deteriorate the liner, mm -hmm. the inner jacket, the liner inside is made of plastic. So just yeah. kind of from expanding and contracting nonstop, it just can start to fall apart and flake. The seals can start to go. So now it's bleeding air into your attic and you're air conditioning it. Also, and electricity out here is just outrageous. So yeah. Yep. Bills go up, everything goes up, and especially with gas and electric going up. It's... And we also know that builders like to do the cheapest thing possible. Like, no offense to our builders <laughs> out there. It's just, you know, it's like anything. You're trying to build it for as cheap as possible, sell it for as much mm -hmm. as possible, make as much profit, right? That's, really? That's what... That's the business yeah, model for it. It's a business. Yeah, it's a business. <laughs> the thing is, is that with the duct that they used back then, it just was not rated for the desert, you know, and so it just starts losing, you know, just all the way around. They also do things like where it joins together instead of using the proper materials or what would be deemed as proper materials today yeah. just weren't used back then. So technology, everything like that just keeps getting yeah, better. On the duct system inspections, those are the things we're going to look at that it's like, is it outdated? Is it falling apart? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be sealed? Does it need to be cleaned? You know, all those things come into consideration. So a big question, and I'm sure a lot of people have these questions with the newer systems that we're putting in now. Mm -hmm. seems like the equipment, especially on those runs on the side of the house, just keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Now, is that going to become a problem next year when these new systems with the new refrigerant, mm -hmm. are the systems going to still keep getting bigger to where we may not have clearance to put them on the side of the house anymore, especially out here with the retaining walls and things like that. Yeah. So we have ran into problems like that. Mm -hmm. So for example, we work on a big high rise condo building out in um, Lake Las Vegas okay. and they have them on the patio outside. I've seen those. Yeah. And they're yeah. five stories tall. <laughs> the problem is, is we've gotten to the point where now the sliding glass door is not large enough, but getting a crane to yeah. swing it in there is dangerous. It, so, 100%. It's, so it's, we're torn between, do we have the, the glass door taken out? Do we disassemble this unit to put it back together? Hopefully that fits. <laughs> or do we have a crane in a, you know, a less desirable position mm -hmm. for the crane operator, the building, us, everybody. And it's kind of a tricky situation. So we have seen some problems. Now, the name of the game with air conditioning is, uh, you know, surface area. The bigger that coil, the more heat that coil can reject at a single time. Okay. So you, we have seen where they have started to double up and use double coil. So where instead of it being one layer of a coil, it's actually two coils inside of themselves. Okay. It's actually funny if you go outside in our warehouse and you look at the three and a half ton versus the three ton, the three ton is a bigger unit because yeah. it's a single coil, but the three and a half ton is smaller, but it has two coils in it. So it has more surface area of coil, but it's in a smaller package. So we've seen it kind of blow up and then kind of start regressing in size. <laughs> like phones. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like at one point we didn't want them to be big. They got really tiny and now everyone's looking for the- Like Zoolander, hello. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was like, I've got the biggest one possible. It's you like know? big as my head, right? But um, yeah. So Robert, you know, we've kind of addressed a couple things, why the, the systems are where they are, um, the duct work, things like that. But let me ask you this, you know, because mm -hmm. we do get, you know, emergency calls pretty much every day coming in. Okay. What is that drop everything, get somebody on the phone. What are some of those sim symptoms that, you know, customers should know that, hey, you know, not out of sight, out of mind anymore. We need something going on right now. Okay. Um, there's going to be a couple. Okay? okay. And this is something for all the people at home to keep an eye on. All right. Okay. Number one, you start getting excessive noise. Obviously you've been living with this system for a while. If you start hearing any loud, like grinding, banging, knocking coming, coming from, from the outside attic or in, oh, from the, okay. from the attic, um, 
is that you're going to, you know, know that something's wrong. There is a fan up there and the fan with the blower wheel is kind of, I compare it to like a washing machine. And you know, when you load a washing machine to like a clothes washing machine, too much on one side, like rocks and bangs, it's kind, it's kind of very similar and they can come apart or vibrations can cause them to get all out of whack. Yeah. And cause a lot of damage. Next that I always see is we hear people all the time say, oh, I saw the thermostat working its way backwards. And then as the sun went down, it started coming down. That is a sign of bigger things to come and you're just causing more damage. So if you ever see your thermostat work backwards, like you have it set at 78 Mm -hmm. and now it's 79, now 80, now 81. And then yeah, yeah, when the sun starts setting, then it starts, once the heat load's gone, it starts working its way down. That could be a number of things. That could be as simple as like just too dirty of a filter, but that could be low on refrigerant and low on refrigerant could be very harmful to the system. And then the last would be, obviously you're not getting, you're getting air, but you're not getting cold air. Obviously that should be calling it. So especially with the summers that we have out here, you want that a hundred percent. The rare ones that you're going to see is that I always tell everyone to keep an eye on. If you start seeing random watermarks on the ceiling, there is a drain up there. So the cooling coil up in the attic gets cold. And just like a cold glass of water, how been, it begins to sweat and yeah. like get the water on the outside. That coil does the same thing. And we typically have one drain pan on our installs. We put a secondary drain pan just to catch any water, but that could mean that the drains that lead that water outside are backed up or we have a compromised, broken, cracked, rusted drain pan. Something that they need to yeah, make and call right away. The water mark on the ceiling is not my big concern. My big concern is how long has this been going on? Mm-hmm. Are we creating mold? And are we about to dump a bunch of water into the attic that's going to cause, like, the ceiling to collapse, which we've yeah. seen that as well. Especially so, in the condos, things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's going to be more of your monsoon season, end of July, mm-hmm. early August. Like, watch out for those. So what do you recommend they do to kind of prevent that? Yeah, so obviously in our preventative maintenance checks, that's one thing that we do. So to go into the checkup, what we always do is, if you're on our maintenance plan, the cool club, mm-hmm. We do an AC inspection, which checks the unit outside and then everything in the attic. And then in the furnace inspection, we check everything in the attic again. Um, When we're up there checking everything out, depending on what time of year, we're going to check all your motors, all your components. We're going to check your ductwork, those drain pans, those drains. The whole moral of the story is we want to make sure that it's safe for you and your family Mm -hmm. because if we're dealing with a gas fire furnace, carbon monoxide, obviously you want to make sure it's safe. 100%. Uh, We want to make sure it's reliable. I don't want you, I don't want to see you guys again. I mean, I like our customers, but right. I don't want to see you under it broke down <laughs> after I just checked it. Times yeah. a year. <laughs> we, we want to see you only at your regular inspections, Correct. With no emergencies in between. And then I also want it to be uh, efficient for you. I mm-hmm. don't want you paying $500 on your power bill. If I can make it 300 with some regular maintenance. Yeah. Pretty that's, easy. that's what we're trying to do up there. So you brought up a lot about the furnaces, uh, the heat pumps in the attic. Um, mm-hmm. Summer's right around the corner. Yeah. You know, what are some of the symptoms that are really going to stick out that need that instant attention yeah um with the outside unit so i guess i should make this very clear i said about the the noises in the attic you hear anywhere noises that don't sound normal for your system call us out immediately Um, (laughs) because a quick little trip for us to either say hey no it's normal or find the cause of this can save you from major damage for example it works like a complete system um some people at home and yourself may have heard of the compressor Yes. It's the heart of the system. Mm-hmm. It's the main pump that pumps all the refrigerant, all the freons around in your system. Kind of like, you know, the blood system in the body. Right? Exactly, right? Yep. And what can happen is like something as simple as a dirty filter can cause your system to start to freeze. When, really? Yeah. And so a dirty, because you're limiting airflow. So that cold coil just gets colder and colder. And just how I mentioned, it creates condensation. Mm-hmm. That condensation starts to freeze and that makes the airflow issue worse. And then it can turn into a solid block vice. Now... What ends up happening is the refrigerant changes from a uh, gas to a liquid back to a gas, but it, for it to change back into a gas, we need heat from the air to do that. Correct. And if that coil is completely frozen, we're not getting any heat. So that liquid goes back into that pump and you know, liquid is a non-condensable and we're going into a compressor. It's trying to compress it, causes things to break. It happens a lot in the summer times, right? That's a very technical answer, but like something as simple as a filter can cause that compressor to get louder and then you didn't know it, and now you're looking at a potentially three to six thousand dollar repair because you had a dirty filter because you ignored the noise. Yeah, we've ran calls to where you know I'm seeing pictures of just ice. Yeah, in the outside unit, it's like okay, well, we can't really do anything because it's all frozen over. So yep. L- leave it off. We'll see yeah. you tomorrow, kind of <laughs> yeah, thing. Or we'll know? see you later tonight, depending <laughs> on the time of day. When and it's, it's 110 degrees outside, that's not really feasible yeah. sometimes. And that's the thing is that when you start um, hearing weird noises or you start seeing that. Um, mm-hmm thermostat work backwards on the temperature, turn it off. 
just turn it off because if we get there, like you said, it was frozen and we can't do anything because it's completely frozen. Yeah. We have to wait for it to defrost to diagnose it. And you let it run for just 48 hours and just freeze into a solid block ice. You just made that defrost process longer. And, and it's doing damage to the and, system, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, and yeah. it continued your pain because now you've been hot and sweaty for 24 to 48 hours, and now yeah. I have to tell you I'll be back in 12. And yeah. then that's when we can start talking solutions on how do we fix this problem. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to kind of wrap up everything here, mm-hmm. um, who do you got winning the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, ooh. <laughs> that's, had to bring, you know that I had to bring this up. You're wearing the red. Yeah. The shirt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can interpret this however you want. Um, so I'm a Raider fan, so I got feelings for both Boom. teams. Yeah. Um, my dad would say— How do you feel about that, first off? I mean, the Chiefs and the Niners are pretty much the hated two teams from the Raiders, I would assume, right? Yeah, yeah, the Bay Area rivalry, rivalry and then the and AFC West. And the Chiefs West. always beat them. But I guess the thing is, is I've had more smack talk— uh, from the Niner community through my entire life, more than the Chiefs, because for a long time the Chiefs weren't very good. It's been recent history, and I mean, yeah. that's your opinion. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, we haven't been very good for a long time either. So I can say that. And I felt like when I lived in California, um, I just was constantly getting beat up. Even though it's like AFC NFC, I'm like, why do we hate each other? I don't understand this. I think it's more of most Raider fans are Dodgers fans and most Niners fans are Giants fans. And so that kind of rivalry bleeds and that makes over. More sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when I tell people I'm a Laker, Raider, Dodger fan, they're like, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I say the Chiefs and the Royals, it's like, who are the Royals? Yeah. <laughs> who? Anyways. Um, so for me, I guess I, I like watching greatness in action. Like I've tried to enjoy Tom Brady. I'm trying to enjoy LeBron James, even though he's on my Lakers. I was just, I'm a Kobe guy. So it's just really hard. Uh, today's Kobe day, by the way, two, eight, 24. Keep that in mind. Uh, for me, um, I'm trying to enjoy greatness. The Mahomes Kelsey connection is just one that I've, they built it the good, good old way. Let's we, see the Chiefs we, win. We got that on film. Yeah. You okay. got that on film. Cool. I, so come next season, I don't want to hear any trash talk from you. Cause you oh, just said, no, no, no. I, in the greatness. Super Bowl, it's greatness. It's, it's, <laughs> You heard it here first. Yeah, I guess it's greatness. (laughs) Yeah, it's greatness. Well, Robert, I do appreciate you joining us today, buddy.